so I'm Cyril Benuna. Uh, I'm in Population Family Health, uh, Program on Forced Migration and Health, PHHA. And I was in Bukavu, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. I was working directly with Rebuild Hope for Africa, which is a small uh, nationally run NGO uh, in Bukavu, based in Bukavu, but they have offices in different territories and provinces throughout DRC. But it was on a grant that came uh, through education above all uh, with the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack. So that larger project has different uh, sites in different countries. So our local partners in the DRC project was RHA. So we were trying to figure out two things. One, what is the child protection environment in DRC and in Bukavu and South Kivu province uh, more specifically uh, surrounding schools and education? Uh, so how do you protect schools from attacks and how do you protect the children and school personnel from attacks by um, rebel groups, armed groups, the government, the police, etc. Um, you know, there are over 40 different armed groups active in in Eastern Congo right now and so we were then also trying to figure out how do you monitor that type of attack? Uh, what are the systems in place? What systems could be in place? Uh, what are the big gaps? Etc. Well given the fact that I was working with less, investigative methods uh, was really helpful. I actually drew on it a lot because uh, it was a quantitative-ish based um, uh, practicum, but at the same time a lot of the research qualitative interviewing skills that I learned from Lindsay in that class were also really helpful and I'm glad that I took Epi 2 just in terms of the thinking um, you know what am I missing what kind of conclusions can I draw uh, what should I follow up on uh, what could have been done in a more perfect environment those types of things uh, definitely came directly from Epi 2 So towards the end, actually, this is, it was chronologically so perfect because the whole first month and a half, two months were just like punishing and really tough. And then they kept on getting better and better and you felt like there was going to be this cli climax point. And it happened like a week before I left where uh, UNICEF finally, after chasing them down, having like 10 missed meetings with them, well 10 is exaggerating, three or four missed meetings with them where I had to like go from one place to the other in a motorbike and like just missed them by five minutes even though they said they had they were going to be there and I was there early. Um, I finally was able to meet with them, present my findings and they were like this is great, we definitely want to use this, um, thank you. And I was like oh we're not working against one another, we're actually working together, this is great. Okay. Um, so really, was there low points or challenging moments from the first two months? Yeah, like so just, I mean, even just the first time, so when I first got there, a lot of it was just planning, you know, sitting in a room, working with the team, uh, learning from them, kind of training based on what my expectations were, and then the first time I went out was when we actually got called by the education cluster to do a rapid assessment of a village right after a massacre happened. So we got there, the entire village had fled, it was completely empty. Uh, all that was left were soldiers and uh, bullet holes across all of the buildings. And we went back to where, uh, to the back of the village where the massacre had happened and you just see this, uh, I think they were in church, you walk to the backyard and you just see stacks and stacks of little children's shoes. Um, that was really devastating and I was like, what, what is my research going to do about this? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, so, I mean, the, the really huge advantage here was working with a small local NGO, learning their perspective, understanding what kind of pitfalls uh, they face and at the same time what kind of uh, benefits there are from, from um, their mobility and their access and their uh, ongoing commitment to their, their context, that was a really inspiring and informative thing, but at the same time I was able to work with all of the different INGOs in, in the education and protection clusters. So I got this beautiful cross-section, uh, which was a total unexpected uh, benefit of this project um, that I think will influence me in all sorts of soft ways. 
Um, the more kind of hardcore way that I think this will impact my future planning is that I definitely want to do documentation of human rights abuses at some point, even if it's not the first thing that I, I go after. I just don't think that there are this many opportunities to do this kind of work, uh, but it's something that I'll be aspiring to do again uh, coming out of school. <laughs> um, if you ever make it to Bukavu, there are really great dance clubs that are hidden, definitely go to those.